Vegetable police here. Suspect in question today, Mike the Vegan. So you don't like raw foods, huh? I'd have punch you in the fallopian man tubes. Go vegan, motherfucker, make a muffin. You couldn't even kill a rubber ducky, son. If you had to hunt you. So I was perusing, fucking perusing Facebook. And I'm in this group called Raw Food Backed with Science. See that? I was added to it. I love how you can be added to groups without knowing it. I wonder what other crazy homoerotic groups I'm involved with. Raw food actually has quite a bit of science supporting it. And that's what this group is all about. This girl, Julianne, she just searches constantly and just posts all this stuff about science and raw foods and why raw foods are great according to science. But somebody shared this video, Mike the Vegan, where he for some reason wants to attack fully raw Christina and say raw food, there's no science. Raw food, Christina's fake unicorn universe versus science, the real truth. That's how they paint it. It's, it's religion versus science brought to the diet world and there is no God in science. God made me eat rice crackers once. So let's go over some of the points he made. I'm Mike and today we're going to look at some raw food claims and even scare tactics used by the raw vegan movement. Scare tactics? Like we're trying to scare people into eating lemons. He makes it seem like raw foodists are just this dishonest cult of lying sacks of shit who just want to bring you over to their side so they can eat your bones. Let's break this into two parts. First, how cooking provides no nutritional benefit. This is just factually incorrect. Here's some research on cooking methods and antioxidants that I think might be, for some health foodists, a little uncomfortable. It found that even microwaving, the all dreaded microwaving in certain cases like celery, actually made antioxidants more available than in the raw form. Congratulations, science. You're an idiot. I guarantee you. I can't guarantee it, but I guarantee you. You put two people, one on mangoes, raw, the other on cooked mangoes. I bet you the raw person's gonna have better health results. You destroy a lot of shit. You might increase one thing or two and then destroy many others. That's not a health practice. But in Christina's favor, raw foods in general did have slightly more, about one eighth more antioxidants available than cooked food. And then he instantly debunked himself. Good work. The main point here is you can't just say cooking provides no nutritional benefit. Cooking sometimes provides a nutritional benefit. And I have a problem with what he just said. He said cooking provides more nutritional benefit. That's not proven. You're just looking at something on paper saying antioxidants increase. What happens in the body? That's the only thing that matters. Did eating that cooked food, did those increased antioxidants do anything? Were they destroyed? Were they altered in some way? And were they even being able to be utilized because the whole food package has now been destroyed and altered? He said it increased benefits. What did he say? What did he say? What did you say? Cooking sometimes provides a nutritional benefit. That's an opinion. Not based on science. I thought he was a science channel. And this is actually very concerning because it is fear-mongering and there is no credible body of evidence or research showing that cooked foods in general are harmful. There are particular foods that when cooked can be harmful, like for example, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are a widely accepted carcinogen that is created when cooking meat. But plants? No, not plants. Welcome to Lie City. The mayor of this town, Mike the Vegan. I thought this guy was all about the science, bringing you the truth. Like, we're supposed to trust this guy because he's delving into the research that we don't want to do, and then he's reporting back the truth. That's why you would watch this guy's channel, isn't it? It can't be for his boyish good looks. That's why I watch it. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are formed when you cook protein-rich foods. 
Guess what has protein in it? All fucking plants. As a vegan, you've probably been asked several hundred times, where do you get your protein? And you did some research and you found out, holy shit, it's in everything. So when you high temperature heat a food like roasting or baking, you form these things in plants. It's not just exclusive to meat, nuts and seeds. Look at this, nuts, herbs, beverages. Don't barbecue your beverages. Stop that. I know it's delicious, it's fun. You pour it on and you lick the rocks. I do it, but stop doing it. I remember reading a book, I think it was this one, Becoming Raw. And it was all about the science and raw food. And they said, when you cook a food, I, I believe it was protein ends up forming these cancer causing chemicals like the poly aromatic hydrocarbons. It forms those at 350 degrees. So when you heat a protein past 350 degrees for a certain amount of time, you form those polycyclic aroma carbon. Fuck. Polycyclic aromatic. They also said that when you heat carbs past 250 degrees, that's when you form the acrylamide. And I may have these numbers wrong up. They could have been different in the book, I don't remember. It was fucking like seven years ago. But the point is, poisons are formed during the cooking process that weren't there in the raw food. That is not a good thing. You increase one nutrient, destroy 30 others, and create cancer-causing chemicals when you cook a food. Science can go suck a lemon. Next point, the page insinuates that grains are unnatural and unhealthy, quote, Many foods that are cooked would otherwise be unappetizing or inedible to humans, such as meats and grains, thus bypassing sensory safeguards that would normally protect the body from ingestion of unnatural and unhealthy substances. This, like the paleo eating philosophy, is denying the widespread consumption of grains for a very long time. Going back to the dawn of modern man, not only were we cooking before Homo sapiens existed, but 105,000 years ago, you can find cooked grains. Fully Raw Christina says grains are bad. I agree. But Mike the Vegan found evidence that cavemen ate grains and it's all good now. Myself and a lot of people on earth do not do well with grains at all. I don't care what science you have. You eat something, you get sharp stomach pains. It's like, that's probably not a good food. Why do we need science to prove that? Listen to your goddamn body. It'll tell you more than science ever will. So let's look at the net negative effect of all of this toxemia and grain alcohol. From this study looking at over a hundred thousand people, they did find a negative effect. There is a stepwise decrease in total mortality as you increase grain consumption. And from this meta-analysis of 45 studies, a 90 gram increase in whole grain consumption lowered your chance of dying from cancer by 17% and your chance of getting heart disease by 22%. And in some people, it also increases your chance of stomach upset 100%. Thank you, science. From a personal anecdotal point, I do know of raw vegans who, when they were eating raw, had a clinically low B12 deficiency with physical manifestations, but I have not seen this in cooked food vegans that I know yet. So he just said, as long as you're on a cooked food diet, you don't need to supplement B12. Or did I read that wrong? How? Cooking destroys B12, and there was no B12 in the plants anyway, but cooking the food magically makes it appear and grow 10 times its strength in seven minutes. It's proven, science. That is dangerous advice. Fully raw Christina, she gives advice. People might heal their cancer. This guy's saying, cook food, he's never seen a cooked food vegan with a B12 deficiency. Have you not heard of vegan games? Guy's injecting B12 in his ass. He eats a lot of cooked food. I think most of the studies ever done on vegans have been cooked food eating vegans who are B12 deficient. 
The next point is almost entertainingly out there. It's that all spices are excitotoxins, quote, spices like garlic, onion, curry, cumin, cayenne, chili powder, and oregano are common in cooked food. We have a saying in the raw community about this. If you can't make a meal out of it, it is suspect at best. It is suspect at best. This is just an amazingly incorrect blanket statement. It's essentially saying that cumin can fry your brain cells because you can't eat a bowl of it. And the idea that once a leaf dries, it somehow becomes evil? Like, look at this fresh mint leaf. It's so beautiful. It's, oh no, it's, it's wilting into a spice. Ah, excitotoxin! I hate when people are so cocky about things, like they're making fun of it. Like spices, there's no chance for spices to be bad. When I eat garlic powder, I get a mucus response instantly. When I'm done finishing the meal, it's like I'm coughing up mucus that wasn't there before adding the garlic powder. I've tested this thoroughly in my body. And spices are irritating. They're irritants. Are they as bad as a McDonald's Happy Meal that brings no happiness whatsoever to your life? Of course not. This much cinnamon versus that much sad meal they can't, you can't compare it. It's not gonna have the same effect. But the more you eat, the more you will notice mucus in your throat. In super healthy people, you might not notice it, but give somebody with like a bladder infection, a bunch of garlic powder and onion powder and cayenne pepper, they're gonna be peeing fire. And spices in general are extremely healthy. As this study of over 3,000 foods show, they often have very high antioxidant levels. Oh, never mind all that. He found a study that said spices have antioxidants. So forget all that. Forget all the pain and the peeing fire, blood, and anger. Science has a long way to catch up with what's already been discovered in people who have healed themselves of chronic disease. Oh wait, maybe in 20 years you guys will realize, oh, just because the nutrient, fuck off. Just because a food has more of a certain nutrient doesn't mean that it behaves good in the body. Kale has more nutrients than lettuce, but kale is pretty hard to digest. You might not absorb as much, so it's not all about the numbers. Here's a study on raw foodists, and basically it paints a picture that like every raw foodist died in one week. Basically they were all B12 deficient, so they sucked at life. They all had mean corpuscular volume. So mean. Can't you guys get along? Their plasma THC content was bad due to them smoking so much weed. The THC. That's what that means. If you read that study, you'd be like, wow, raw food diet's dangerous. I will never do it. I will never do it. When you go out into the real world, you find people who went on raw food diets and cured every goddamn illness you could think of. Girl cures brain cancer with raw food. She didn't do it with cooked grains and excito spice toxins, did she? So for me, science and diet, there's a place for it, but we gotta start doing some better studies because if you're just looking at numbers on a sheet of paper, saying antioxidants increased by seven. Who cares? What effect did it actually have on the body? That's what we need to study. I don't care that rats ate 7% more lemonade and they, every one of them had sex more, more often. So final thoughts. What are my thoughts on this? Why are we battling each other? What was the point of making that video? I know he wants to be this all-knowing science guy who proves that raw food is bad. Why? I don't know. I mean, you get people that are sick, they often need to go on a raw food diet. I did in the beginning. I needed that. I don't think I would have healed if I just went straight into cooked rice and beans. I needed to detoxify my body with the fruits, easiest to digest food. Raw foods are super helpful, and sure, you can get away with some cooked foods. The starch solution, a lot of people eat nothing but cooked foods and are fine. But why are vegans attacking other vegans? 
it can't be for scientific inaccuracy because your whole video was quite inaccurate, if I may say so myself. Do us raw fooders throw out some hippie shit sometimes? Some pseudoscience that makes no sense, has no basis in reality? Yeah, we do that. Who doesn't? We say cooking food destroys the enzymes, and enzymes are magical little beings that ride on unicorns and take your diseases out of the body. That's all true. We say these things because we're guessing. We don't know why raw foods are so powerful. We just know they are. And they heal disease faster than any other diet. The raw fooders age slower, in my experience. The high fat ones at least. You look at Lou Corona, Karen Calabrese, Life Regenerator, Annette Larkins. I mean, there's something to this. And so many testimonials of people healing themselves on raw foods. I'm sure there's plenty of the same testimonials of people healing themselves on cooked food. But we don't have to attack each other. No one's right or wrong. We may not have the correct wording for why something is working, but raw food is powerful. Cooked food can be tolerated. It's not better than raw food. A cooked potato is probably better than a raw potato because a raw potato is a lump of shit and your body can't do anything with it. But to attack a raw foodist because she doesn't know the terminology, she's not a scientist like you. She's helping people though. And that's the most important thing. You go vegan, whatever your style of vegan diet, you can find one that works. I myself, I do a high fat vegan diet and there's a lot of science supporting nut consumption, which I've showed in previous videos. So I feel better than I ever have in my life. And I don't feel good when I eat cooked food. When I cheat on like a big starch meal, the next day I feel like I have a bit of a hangover. It affects the body. I'm sure you can get used to it and work with your hangover, but any raw foodist knows they eat a big cooked meal, it's like, holy shit, got hit by a truck. So there's something to it, and maybe you can't prove that with science. That's why I side on the side of common sense. Instead of science, I'm sure we can work together, and I think we're done here. That is about it for today. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video. What are your thoughts on raw food versus cooked food? The debate. Do we need science to prove that raw food is the best? Does it matter? What are your thoughts? Post them down below. So that's it. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Just make sure it's spread evenly. Now you're beautiful. I, you know, if you're religious, you know, you, you want to display that cross. And I, I think this is the best way to do it. It's the most practical way. Just to do that. I think.